welcome everyone to episode number 15 of All Things Fisker. I'm joined tonight with my special co-host, Matt from Ocean Views or Tesla Tips by Mountain Ranger. Identity crisis going on there soon. He will have, uh, he'll have, he'll have it sorted out. Uh, but yeah. we are tonight, just the two of us again. Jim is actually taking the night off tonight, but we do have some special news for you at the end of the show when we get to our uh, notable EV news segment. There's something really awesome that he's doing, and we'll let you know, keep you posted there. Um, so I wanted to start off. Hello, and, and uh, welcome to everybody who's joining us tonight from uh, the, the podcast, right? We have the All Things Fisker podcast. This is episode number 15. You can find it probably on my favorite uh, station now, TuneIn, uh, as well as Spotify. You can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, all those places. So welcome. Thank you for, for those that are, are downloading the podcast and, and listening to it. Uh, we have quite a few people joining us tonight, it looks like, over on YouTube. And we have uh, a few of the regulars that we see here. We have Tommaso. We have Mikey, Steven. Uh, Rosanna, uh, Mauricio, Mikey, a bunch of, bunch of different people. So um, thank you, everybody, for, for joining us tonight. That's great. Uh, if you want to do a shout out of where you're from, it looks like Orlando is one of them in Maine, uh, Cincinnati. So it's, it's always fun to see where people are, are listening to this or, or watching this uh, because it, it kind of tells us uh, our reach and uh, where um you know where all of our, our viewers and, and listeners are so um i'm gonna shout out shout out a couple of them and then we'll uh give you the agenda for the night uh so we got people from north carolina burlington vermont salt lake city tonight uh suffolk virginia greenwich connecticut overland park uh jingesh welcome thank you for being a club member uh he's in overland park kansas i've been there actually and they actually have i'm gonna shout it out there i don't know if he's in the ribs but there's a great place called jack stack barbecue matt do you like ribs oh yes sure do <laughs> <laughs> so if you ever make it to Overland Park, I had to go there for a business trip to the Sprint headquarters. And I don't know if that's there anymore, but they had Jack Stack's Barbecue. It's the first time I've ever had it. I love it. Uh, so uh, for those that are in the area, you're very lucky. And we have other people joining us from Princeton, New Jersey. That's uh, Jose. We have Gian from Gary, New Hampshire, Dallas, Texas. Uh, so all over the place. Uh, uh, Chicago, Brian. Very cool. And whoa. Here's the cool one. Jesper from the forums is joining us tonight from Denmark. Woo woo. I'm going to raise the roof for him. Jeez, I don't even know what time it is in Denmark right now. I, all I know is it's it's got to be really, really late. Um, so let's see. What time is it in Denmark right now? It is, it says 1 o'clock UTC, um, 3.07 a.m. Good heavens. That is, <laughs> that is late or early. So welcome, Jesper. You deserve the biggest shout out of everybody. All right. So tonight, Matt and I have uh, quite a few things lined up for you guys. Uh, we're going to talk about the Henrik Fisker's favorite pick of the Fisker Ocean. We're going to talk about the clean water choice that he that he gave. That was kind of an interesting one. And then we're going to talk about the at the money offering that uh, the program, the $350 million at the money equity program, we're going to give you an update on that. Something we learned this week, or maybe I learned it. I don't know. Uh, it seemed like I was the only one that wrote about it. And then we're going to talk about Stockholm. We got a couple updates out of there. We're going to give you the poll results from last week on that pop-up location. Like where's the next Fisker Ocean pop-up location going to be and, and talk about uh, what everybody voted on. And then we're going to talk about Music Cares. That was an event over the weekend. And we learned some new stuff about the audio system on the Fisker Ocean. And then you're going to get the notable EV news for the week. Who's excited? Who's excited? I we know are. Matt's excited. <laughs> I know Matt. I'm excited. You see the smile on my face. Um, hopefully people in the chat are excited. And uh, if, uh, if you guys want us to talk about something else, if we miss something, let us know uh, in the chat. We're going to try to monitor the chat while we do this tonight. Um, there is a poll at the very top of the chat right now. Actually, I think there was actually. It's not pinned. Is it pinned? It might be pinned. 
Um, anyhow, there's a poll somewhere in the chat, and it asks you a question. So we're gonna we're gonna cover this uh, sometime tonight. So far, it's got 56 votes. The question: What is your must-have Fisker Ocean accessory? You have four choices: roof rack, all-weather floor mats, and those would be rubber, of course. Uh, solar roof shade, or a pet liner. That's your poll that we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, tonight when we get to some interesting stuff later. So, Matt. Henrik Fisker's favorite Fisker Ocean configurations. Did you see that this uh, this week? I think that might have been yesterday. Yes. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, there was three of them, if I'm not mistaken, and they were. Um, I think they were presented and then taken down and modified. What? Were tell they everybody really? about that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's yeah. some new news to me. Um, hope I have the right information here. Then. Um, so. There, there was three, and correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe this is not up to date. Oh well, um, no, that, there's three. Those different... are correct. I just wanted to say that there oh. was a description of the um, for the wheels uh, that they were going to have. Oh. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, for the wheels, they have to do those extra wide spacers. Yes, the spacers, and I think they removed that from the posting. Interesting. So yeah. as people can see my screen, I actually took screenshots of everything with the text that Matt is referring to. So clean water, there's three different picks, if you want to call them, or Henrik's favorites, right? There's three of them. Um, would love to hear what people think in the chat, which is your favorite of the bunch. So we had clean water, we have Elegant Sky, and we have Midnight Rebel. Those are the names that they gave them. You know, marketing team came up with those clever, clever names. Uh, the Clean Water is the Blue Planet Malibu F6 wheels with Henrik's personal choice of 12 millimeter extra wide track spacers. Okay, so that's the first one, the Clean Water. Interesting. Uh, next one, Elegant Sky, Silver Lining Sea Salt F3. A, those slipstreams, and again, he likes uh, the the spacers. Uh, maybe he likes them to protrude a little out of the out of the uh, wheel well. I'm not sure. Um, and then <laughs> Midnight Rebel, Night Drive, Malibu F5, the black air gliders with his personal choice of 12 millimeter extra wide uh, track spacers. So those were the three that Henrik Fisker. I know we've been asking him quite a bit in instagram on you know twitter when he was on twitter uh we asked him hey what's your favorite fisker ocean uh keller what's your favorite fisker ocean you know wheels or your interior and finally lo and behold he ends up sharing uh three different choices now i found this actually kind of interesting and the reason i found it interesting is because he did choose blue uh blue planet right he did choose this particular color but the thing that that struck me is is kind of odd is here's his actual configuration that he did in july 2022 so when fisker ocean pre-orders opened up the fisker ocean one he was one of the first that that placed the order he shared that hey i placed my order uh for the fisker ocean one and his personal configuration was the blue planet he had sea salt interior and he had the air glider wheels. So fast forward, what is it, six months? Wonder if he's actually done a you know a switcher a switcheroo or a change up of his own personal uh, configuration because now he's got he's loving blue planet still. He loves the color, but now he's swapped out uh, different wheels. He went with uh, you know the vortex wheels, and he also ended up going with a uh, Malibu interior instead of his original sea salt. So something tells me these are just three picks that he chose off the top of his head. Or maybe, just maybe, Matt, do you think the marketing team ended up picking these and slapped Henrik's uh, name on it as Henrik's favorite? <laughs> well, I don't know, right? No, Anything's possible, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? If we ever interview him again, uh, we will ask him, we'll be sure to ask him, we'll ask him why he chose Blue Planet, Vortex Wheels, and Malibu when his original uh, configuration with his uh, order uh, that he did for the Ocean One was something totally different. So that's Henrik's picks and uh, found that pretty cool that, that we got to see that. And then 
One additional thing, Matt, um, that they ended up sharing was they, uh, on Instagram, they've been doing like a poll every day, kind of like, I thought it was, it coincided with maybe like the NFL playoffs, you know, the last few weeks of the NFL playoffs where they would put two wheels together and be like the, you know, the F5 slipstreams in black versus the, uh, you know, the, the vortex wheel. And it was like, whatever one went to the next week. Um, and we ended up getting from Fisker that, you know, the people's choice from that particular, you know, um, match off was Big Sur Blue was the color. And we definitely know people love Big Sur Blue because we did a poll in the Fiskerati forums, I don't know how many months ago that was, maybe back in October. And more than a third or about a third of the people that took the poll, and there was well over 100 people that took this. I forgot exactly how many, but it was well over 100. And the majority of people chose Big Sur Blue. And we were we happened to be one of those people. Uh, but as you know, we changed to uh, Great White, and then we changed to Night Drive. Um, the people's choice included Big Sur Blue and the black F5, uh, or maybe F3 air glider wheels. F3 air glider wheels. Um, actually, no, I'll take that back. Uh, F3 uh, slipstream wheels, slipstream. Jeez, having a hard time seeing my own screen. <laughs> so that's the people's choice. Um, what, what's missing from this? Do, do you, do, I didn't see the interior. They didn't provide an interior. They did like the match off for the exterior and for the, uh, for the, the, the exterior, uh, and the wheels, but no mm -hmm. interior. I thought that was kind of interesting. It, they could have done that over a few days and done the matchup and, and came up with like a full complete build of like the people's choice, but, um, mm -hmm. that was missing. So we don't know what everyone's favorite is uh who follows uh fisker on instagram but what do you think overall uh matt did you do you i think you like uh mariana that's your your preferred yeah. color yeah that's my preferred so i mean uh, they, they all look pretty good i mean i i'd have a, a tough choice picking between uh, big sur blue <clears throat> or the horizon gray i think they all look pretty nice um one thing I want to mention is that the uh, spacers, some people were asking in the comments what the spacers were. And yeah. they're usually, I, I think I have a picture. I, let me bring up my share thing. Yeah. But what they usually are is a, let me grab it. Get yeah, I didn't know what a spacer here. was either. I had to yeah. look it up to see even what it looked like. Let's take a look here. What do you got? All right. Uh, does that come up? Yo, yeah, it's on the screen. We got spacers. Yeah, that's what they look like. They're anywhere from like a half an inch to an inch thick. And they basically add, um, you know, width to the wheel. So the wheel sticks out further. So the wheel tire combo gets closer to the edge of the, the, uh, the opening. So the wheel well. And uh, mm -hmm. it usually gives a sportier look. Uh, some people think it helps with uh, performance a little bit. Some people don't, um, but it's mostly for the looks. So I'm wondering if this is something that they're going to add at some point, like a uh, an option or accessory thing that you can get with your ocean. So yeah, and I actually read one thing too, Matt, that you can actually, whether it's true or not, I read it on a couple of sites, so I would imagine it. it, it could be true. It said you could actually change the bolt pattern by applying spacers as well. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how how that works, but like assuming somehow it ends up uh, you end up getting one that matches your existing bolt pattern, but then somehow it, it tweaks the bolt pattern where you can apply different wheels that might not fit the you know the bolt pattern that, you know that comes stock on the yes. vehicle. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting as well. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting so yeah, that, to see what they do with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that is pretty neat. That is neat. Uh, and and so you said that they actually removed that verbiage off of the images, so it no longer. Yeah, I thought the, I thought they reposted it later on. Yeah, with that dog. yeah, they probably so, did. Yeah, yeah, they probably did. Uh, that's that's so funny. Um, maybe that's like too personal. It was his pers personal uh, style, and they didn't want to. Or maybe reveal, something uh, they didn't want to announce yet. You know, ooh, or yeah. that, or yeah. that. Maybe there's something more to come. Yeah, I just went and pulled up the images again, and 
You are correct. They are not on there. So it's a good thing we've got screenshots of everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they love that, right? I'm sure Fister loves that. Um, I'm sure our, our viewers and our readers love that, but uh, maybe not Fisker. But hey, it's it's fun. You know, once something's public, it's like it's out there everywhere. Uh, and I think we might have posted them on, on the forum, too, or something on the forum. So yeah. neat. So that's uh, there was one more thing I want to mention is that the um, we're picking. Uh, remember the color combo thing? I sent you an email on that. Oh, today. you mean that right there? Like, what's up with clean water? I just yeah. put a little info infographic up there. Or whatever that's Good called. Segue. I don't know what they call that thing. Yeah, there you go. What's up with the clean water, Matt? You want to tell us? Yeah, if if you go in the configurator and uh, with the uh, you have to pick the trim of the Ocean One, and you pick the um, uh, Blue Planet color, you okay. don't have the ability to pick Mala Blue as an interior, which is what I found out today is actually a bug in the software. Uh, so somebody on Facebook had contacted uh, Fisker and they uh, returned and said that, yes, if you do prefer to have Blue Planet with Malibu Blue Interior, just contact them uh, when you're doing the lock-in and they'll make sure that that's picked. Okay. You know, as your Got suggestion. It. Yeah. So you, you can't get to it if you want, if you have a Fisker Ocean pre-ordered and you want the Malibu Blue Interior with Blue Planet, you can't get it. You have to email Fisker, or presumably you can go to the Rag Giver and you can chat with them on there. Exactly. And maybe they'll make the change too. Um, and I wanted to make a shout out too. So if you head over to um, fiskerati.com and you type in Fisker Ocean Configurator, I threw up a page a while back. Didn't create an article, but threw up a page, and it actually links to one of Matt's videos. And he actually does an awesome job at talking about the start of production and the configurator that launched in November when we were on vacation on our road trip. So that's there on the site uh, for anybody who is interested in that. Um, so cool. Thanks for sharing about the Blue Planet. I, I didn't know that the Blue Planet um, in the Malibu had, you know, uh, had that, that software glitch. So that's that's good that you're aware of that, other people are aware of that, and and mm -hmm. now everybody watching um, knows how to get that if they uh, want that with uh, Blue Planet. Hey, so that's, before that's, we leave the configurator, yeah. I want to yes, mention yes. something else. Um, did you notice that they changed the accessories or options uh, just in the last uh, couple maybe. of days? Maybe. Uh, what, what did you see? Uh, did you notice that they changed the tow hitch description? No, I, I did have not. It. Yes, I'll bring it up right now. I'll share. Excellent. So this is all the extra goodies that uh, we don't even know we're going to talk about uh, when we end up publishing this uh, live stream. So uh, I always put and more in the in the title because Matt always has <laughs> some some tricks uh, up his sleeve or rabbits that he wants to pull out of his hat. So uh, here we go. Let's take a look at the description here. So now we have a tow hitch with electrical. Hmm and they have to itch without electrical. Remember they were originally, uh, what was it called? I think it was the uh, the accessory and mm -hmm. then the full tow package. So now they just made the description a little more clear about what it is. That's pretty cool. So now, now the names are changed, so. So I guess they just do little updates here and there with the configurator and we have to find out like little Easter eggs when they, when they occur. So that's right. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah. tow pitch with electrical. Pretty cool. So yeah, that's your, your configurator changes. That's, uh, I wanted to just give people a heads up about the clean water with the blue planet and the mal blue and then the tow hitch right there that's a new one for me as well so let's go ahead and talk about something kind of interesting uh we're going to talk about fister's 350 million dollar at the money equity program this was launched in i want to say it was april of last year and the company actually i'll take it back may of last year may of last year and the company needed to do this in order to raise capital uh since they're in the production phase right now moving into production and 
it's a costly, costly uh, process to actually build a car. So this particular $350 million half the money equity program helps the company sell shares in the open market to fund operations. And in this case, Fisker actually said uh, that they were going to use the money to uh, develop the Fisker pair and additional vehicles, uh, as well as retail development, additional technology development, and general corporate purposes. So there was an 8K filing done, I believe, last week when we were on the show, and I mentioned it. Uh, and then there was a refiling of another 8K on the 6th of February. So that was just a couple of days ago. And uh, here is the little blurb that I wrote about on, on the site. And uh, basically says Fisker provides update on $350 million app money equity program. And the tidbit in there, there was actually a few different tidbits. Um, I only focused on the app the money equity program uh, because that was to me like the news of everything. Um, according to Bloomberg Law, though, I, I found this uh, after I published the article. I didn't go back and update it. But according to Bloomberg Law, so we all know Bloomberg, they say that Fisker Inc. is the latest electric vehicle maker asking the, the Court of Chancery over in Delaware to retroactively validate stock issuances related to its blank check merger with the Spartan acquisition company um, that may have been unauthorized due to a legal technicality. And uh, as I mentioned, that came from Bloomberg Law, that particular bit right there. But what I found interesting in the filing, it was like 26 pages or thereabouts, and I actually posted it right here. Uh, I'll talk about the, the interesting tidbits, but the first one that I can map that I thought was, was kind of interesting was they talk about uh, how they ended up uh, so far generating a total gross proceeds of $193.5 million in cash from their At The Money equity program, and that ended up equating to $22.5 million uh, shares or thereabouts. And I ended up running the numbers and Fisker basically announced on Q3 2022 that they raised 116 million using their ATM at the money at the market, I should say, um, equity program. And uh, that means that Fisker raised approximately 77.5 million in Q4 2022 using this particular program. And that means there's 156 million. 0.5 million remaining on that program, at which point the company will probably have to determine, uh, and they, they may or you know may or may not know what they're going to do next, but 156.5 million left on this particular program. So they've exhausted uh, more than half of it uh, this past uh, quarter. And the reason I brought this up and I thought it was interesting was because we've been waiting and waiting for Fisker to release a, a press release to tell us when their Q4 2022 earnings are. We don't know when they're gonna be. I thought they were gonna announce it this week. I actually thought they were gonna announce it last week. And then I thought, okay, Tuesday, Tuesday's a great day to drop news. So yesterday I thought they would announce it. And now we're on Wednesday and we still don't know when Fisker's uh, next earnings call and uh, earnings release is gonna be. So I thought that was interesting. This, I guarantee you, will be in uh, the update that we get on the earnings call because this is a huge portion of the update what's the company's current cash position how much money have they raised in the past quarter what was their burn all that good stuff so um i'm surprised that nobody's picked this up yet and there may be a reason why nobody's picked it up but uh i thought it was interesting so i, I published that and then if you roll in here uh and and look i think it was like i'm gonna actually just do uh is like page 16. Let me see if I can fit real quick here. I don't want to have to scroll through a PDF on the live stream. But uh, we had this on our site. If people are interested, you can search ATM at the market uh, and you can find this. Um, so here's the little tidbit that I just kind of read off here. This is the amount of money that they've raised in the last quarter. And they had to actually provide this in order to have the, the Court of Chancery um, accept or validate uh, their charter, their their amendment to the charter. I think it's the second amendment to their charter. So they had to give kind of like the update because they said that they need this uh, this you know technicality, this legal technicality uh, resolved so that it doesn't hinder their financing uh, that they that they're doing, their capital raise and things of that sort. So the bit that I thought was interesting was this here let's see is this the page yes this could be it let's see 
Just bear with me one second. Okay, here it is. So they give the, you know, they need it. They, they basically tell the court, we, we have a need for prompt relief. The company also submits that prompt relief is required. And then they talk about the reasons why they want the court of chancery to actually approve this real quick. Um, it says the company's business is high growth and capital intensive and its capital needs will increase significantly this year. I thought that was interesting. The words significantly early this year. Well, we're early this year. How is early this year? Um, the company anticipates that it'll begin producing sellable vehicles in March of this year with the corresponding ramp in production. So I thought that was interesting, Matt. I don't know if yep. I, it says they will begin producing sellable vehicles. I was under the impression that they are producing vehicles and those vehicles just haven't been shipped yet. But maybe they haven't actually been producing sellable vehicles yet, or maybe they can't say they've been producing sellable vehicles yet until we end up seeing the uh, global certification. Yeah. So I thought that was an interesting tidbit. Um, I think those might be the only two interesting tidbits that I that I found in here. There could be another one, but um, if anyone's interested, you can go read this on the site. Uh, but uh, you have the at the money update, and then you had an, uh, you know the two little bits there about selling producible or producing sellable vehicles. And then uh, March is when the company anticipates actually being able to sell them. So company hopefully still on track for the global certification. I think it's out of their hands. As we all know, we're waiting for all the different governments who need to approve them to approve it so that the company can actually start selling them legally. And uh, it's just kind of a waiting game. We, we're waiting for that still. We're waiting for the EPA uh, range updates. We need the range updates mm -hmm. still. We haven't gotten those. So there's a lot of stuff like pending, like, hey, where's the, when's the next earnings call? Well, maybe the next earnings call isn't announced yet because maybe they're waiting for some really good news um, to share on the earnings call, uh, like, you know, the, the range numbers or the global certification or who knows. So that's that. Um, well, before let's... we move on, um, oh, yes. we have a question about the uh, ATM program. Uh, okay. They want to know that, uh, is it part of the launch of the stock market or something new? I'm not sure exactly what that no, means. This, but... is, this, was, uh, this was announced back in May of 2022. So this is not new mm -hmm. whatsoever. This is yeah. old. They're not, Fisker, it should be super clear. Fisker's not, um, they're not raised out, you know, they didn't announce like, you know, hey, we're going to end up, um, you know, raising even more money. They've already told people back last year, uh, middle of last year, they said, hey, we need money. We're going to raise money. We're going to uh, put this out there, this uh, at, the, at the market equity program, $350 million. It doesn't, you know, at the time, Henrik ended up getting uh, a lot of flack on social media. People saying, oh, you just diluted the company and uh, or the shares and you've already raised all this money. And he said, no, I haven't sold any shares yet. We're going to sell shares and we're going to sell up to $350 million worth. And that's um, what that at the money program is. And that was only kind of like a footnote of that whole 26 page document. Uh, that that is, you know, the company's trying to get some retroactive validation of uh, stock issuances so that they have, um, you know, uh, what is I forgot the, the right term, but basically there's some sort of legal technicality, like I mentioned just a moment ago, and they need to get it, you know, the clerical, uh, you know, work done in order uh, to make it legal uh so nobody can maybe go after them in the future like hey you didn't have the ability to go uh public in the stack and you authorized all these shares and um i don't even know how this came about but i've seen uh lucid do something similar i read a similar article for lucid and a couple other ev spacs as well so it's nothing specific to fisker uh it's happened to a lot of companies that actually went through a specialty purpose acquisition and Fisker, as most people know, or maybe they don't, um, they went public, I believe it was like October 2020, uh, with uh, a merger, reverse merger with the Spartan uh, Energy um, uh, SPAC. And uh, that's uh, kind of, you know, they have to go back to that time period today and get some stuff fixed. So that's the latest with that. Um, and I, I, I bet we will hear something about that on the earnings call because that's pretty important, I think. Um, so I would imagine yeah. we'll hear something about that as well. 
Uh, let's move along to Henrik Fisker in Stockholm. Henrik Fisker, as we mentioned last week, was going to appear at the e-car expo in Stockholm, Sweden. And he did. He actually appeared twice. He appeared uh, in front of the Fisker Ocean early in the morning. And then afterwards, he ended up appearing on, I think it was called like the Friends stage. And it was uh, the uh, the headliner. I think it was, I was going to say the keynote, but it was like the headliner uh, of, of the day. And he talked about a clean future for all. And we posted that video of him speaking. It was about 30 minutes. We posted that to the, the Fiskarati site for those that haven't seen it. It was actually a pretty good talk. I, I definitely enjoyed uh, listening to him. And I think, you know, there wasn't too much stuff that was new, but he did talk about the Fisker pair briefly. He talked about Fisker uh, Ronin. Uh, very briefly, he talked about autonomous driving, and I thought that was, uh, you know, he, that was the most I've heard him talk about autonomous driving. So that was uh, really interesting. Here's him on stage right here uh, with his headset and a couple bottles of water, and he ended up, uh, you know, doing a, a really good job talking about how Fisker uh is you know building the world's most sustainable vehicle he you know i'd say that was kind of like the underlying theme sustainability uh throughout the whole presentation and he ended up talking about at the very end of the presentation i don't know if anyone watched all the way to the end but he did like a quick uh you know uh, i guess it was kind of q a throughout a lot of it um with the with the with the host but he was asked by the host, uh, is there something that you wish I would have asked you that you wanted to talk about or something to that effect? And he said, the price of the Fisker Ocean, and he talked about the pricing, and then he talked about how people have been asking him, presumably at the Stockholm uh, e-car expo show, uh, are you going to drop the price? What are you going to do with the price? Are you going to respond to Tesla? And he said, no, we're not. Um, some people basically, you know, paraphrasing, he said that some some companies um, may have over, over you know, raised or, or increase the price too much and now they had to lower them uh because maybe you know times have changed and uh as we will get to in our ev uh notable ev news since this past week tesla actually bumped up their prices a little again so they raised uh, you know they raised them a bunch and then or, you know they raised them over the pandemic and then they did like the crazy 20 percent you know drop on on most of their evs and then this past week um the model y went up a bit and uh, we'll, we'll cover that here in, in just a minute. But Fisker Ocean in Stockholm, we got some interesting photos. Um, I don't know if anybody got a chance to see these, but take a look at these photos. I thought they were actually pretty neat. And it's going to hopefully segue Matt into our, our next little um, uh, talk here. What did we find out? What did we see? There we go. A roof rack. The roof rack. Yeah, we haven't seen one of those yet. Um, we just saw the roof rack in the FAQ, right? We, we get in the FAQ mm -hmm. at, on Fisker's site. It said, hey, there's going to be a roof rack. And everyone's been like, where's the roof rack? And it wasn't a part of the configurator. It's still not a part of the configurator. But uh, a few people on our site on Fisker Audi forums posted some images and uh, we ended up getting these images here, courtesy of somebody who uh, is a member on Fiskarati forums. And uh, there was actually some really good good shots of, of the roof rack. And I was able to zoom in early in the day, and they're made by a company called InnoRacks. Uh, I've seen those before, uh, but it looked like a third party made these, especially, or I don't know if... Uh, uh, especially to fit, I would imagine the, the Fisker Ocean. I, yeah, I would imagine there's got to be something custom in order to go around that uh, solar sky roof, especially because that's an extreme. Henrik presented and, and mentioned that there was an extreme there, uh, Fisker Ocean extreme for those people that that don't know about that. And uh, we all know that 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 solar sky roof opens up like a sunroof. And I'm wondering if uh it will open up with that roof rack on there i would imagine it will it looks, looks like high enough clearance yeah. yeah it looks high enough yeah it does so well so yeah that you is know cool. i got i got something to add on that the roof rack yeah. on that is 
almost the same design that I had on a mini Clubman that I owned a few years ago. Okay. It, it kind of went around the edge of the, um, the door where you open up the door <laughs> and it locks in very, very similar style because the mini Clubman also had a sub, uh, a, a sunroof that opened up and pushed back towards the back half of the car, much smaller than the ocean, but it actually did lift up and move back. And it was high enough clearance that uh, there was no issues with the, uh, with anything attached to the rack. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat um, that we actually see it and they have skis up there of all things. Uh, that's pretty cool. Some good shots here of the Fisker Ocean. They, I, I see that they had the big Fisker emblem kind of mounted, <laughs> uh, hanging from the sky. The last time I seen that anywhere, uh, I think it might've been at the Barcelona, uh, Mobile World Congress. And then before that, it was at the Los Angeles, uh, auto show. So that was, that was pretty neat. There's Henrik, uh, dressed in black and they had a Fisker Ocean in Horizon Gray at the show and uh look pretty nice with those uh slipstream wheels i i really like those i i still think they're amazing and when you see them in person for the first time they just look like the most gigantic looking wheel i've never seen <laughs> a, a 22 inch wheel before and i've never owned a vehicle with 22 inch wheels before so this is kind of cool uh here's a couple more shots of the interior and the display as we've seen and there's henrik on stage so uh our member that uh, got to share these with us or who shared these with us got a chance to listen to him speak so i thought that was actually pretty neat and then that video is posted online for anyone that's interested in it it's uh 30 minutes and it's definitely worth a listen if you want to hear like an overview of, of everything that that Fisker has to offer and there's a really cool uh, image behind Henrik in this particular photograph. And if everyone remembers a couple, I don't know, three weeks ago, Matt, we ended up talking about uh, Henrik Fisker installing uh, a charger uh, in his garage. And something tells me that is Henrik's garage right there in the background of this uh, behind him on, on stage here. There is a Fisker Ocean parked in the right way it needs to be parked, uh, unlike the, the image he shared uh, that revealed that he had installed his uh, wall box charger. But something tells me that's his garage there with a Fisker Ocean. And I think that might be the black uh, or the night drive, the black uh, exterior Fisker Ocean, the one he shared with everybody. Uh, when it was raining out in Southern California. So that was pretty cool. That's a tidbit that maybe nobody caught. And uh, you heard it here first on All Things Fisker, episode number 15. <laughs> hey, before so, we leave this, I, want to, yeah. uh, I got a question on the, uh, on the comments here about, uh, have we seen any good pictures of the base interior? Now, if you mean the base interior for the the one or the base interior for the sport, those are two different things, right? That's we right. Yeah, we haven't seen a fabric the fabric one yet. You are yeah. correct. Yeah. Um, if we have, it might have been in a photograph uh, of a Fisker Ocean coming down the line at Magnastera, but nothing, uh, nothing pre-production that Henrik has shared yet. I haven't seen anything with the eco fabric yet. Uh, so. You know, maybe someone else has. I haven't seen it come across at all, uh, which doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, but I, I, I would post it if, if we saw it. So uh, we have seen the Black Abyss Plus. Uh, we have seen the Sea Salt and we have seen Malibu. Uh, those are the ones that we, we have seen. Uh, and we've seen some crazy experiments, uh, you know, random oh, yeah. color yeah, ones that. out of out of New York, I think it was. New York, it was like, yeah. Yeah, white and black and all sorts of different colors. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, it was the uh, first time we seen that. And I was thinking, oh my God, I hope they don't do that. That's too much uh, too much for me. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a little over the top um, is what I was getting at. 
Uh, but hey, we just uh, ended the poll. Matt and I uh, are going to read the poll results here. So we asked people at the start of the show and I actually post the poll. So every time we do one of these uh, all things Fisker live streams and uh, we if, if you're you know somebody who listens to the podcast and you want to participate but not uh, watch the show or you don't have time to watch the show, uh, we, we end up doing a poll and I'm going to post a poll every time in the comments or the chat on YouTube. And today's chat, when I started this stream, we have uh, a question. What is your must have Fisker Ocean accessory? And the reason I asked this is because we ended up seeing the roof rack. So 39% of the people ended up saying that their must have accessory is the solar roof shade. Mm. The number two uh, must have feature, all weather floor mats, rubber floor mats, 38% of the people. That's what I picked. And, <laughs> yep, that's the one I picked. Uh, actually, I, 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 I can't say I picked it, but that mentally I picked that. It doesn't let me go because <laughs> I created the poll. I created the poll, so I can't choose uh, an option, but that's the one I would pick. Um, number three, 15% said roof rack. 6% of the people said pet liner. Total of 94 votes, uh, the poll is complete. So that is it. Um, if you were in Fiskarati forums or on Fiskarati forums today, and, and another reason I posted this accessories uh, uh, poll was because Matt ended up posting a, uh, a topic or a, you know, a thread about uh, some, some floor mats that a third party ended up uh, uh, potentially making. They're selling them or listing them on their website for the Fisker Ocean. And I reached out to the company. Uh, I'm not going to mention their name because they actually haven't made them yet. Um, they just did a mock-up and they posted it to their website and they're trying to get some some pre-orders. So that is out there. If you want more details on that, you can go to Fisker Audi Forums and check it out. Uh, but uh, that had me thinking about accessories today. We saw the we saw the, the roof rack, and Matt stumbled across the, uh, the floor mats, and uh, we've talked in previous All Things Fiskers about the solar roof shade, and then I threw out a new one today, a pet liner. Uh, I thought, <laughs> you know, Fisker Ocean has the doggy windows, right? So, like, maybe a lot of people are interested in, in Fisker Ocean for their dogs, and maybe they'll get a pet liner. Maybe they don't care about a pet liner, but... About six, uh, what is it? Five people voted for the pet liner, 6% of the people. So um, <laughs> that was pretty interesting. Uh, so uh, Roseanne asked, what rims is everyone picking? Well, I'm picking the black slipstream wheels. I'd be interested to see what everyone else picks here. It looks like Kevin McKinnon is also picking the 22 inch black slipstreams as well. Good choice, Kevin. Uh, for those, people who haven't yet already liked the video, uh, go ahead and, and take a quick uh, two seconds to hit the like button. That would be super awesome of you. Uh, right now it has 31 likes. Maybe we can get it over 50. That would be pretty cool. And then I posted a link at the top of the video description to subscribe to our channel. I want to make it super easy for the people who are already following our channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe now button. There's a little button there. It says uh, it should be a link. It actually is a link. I'm looking at it right now. Thank you to the people who have just voted uh, or not voted, but um, thank you to the people who voted, but thank you also to the people who just gave us a thumbs up. Uh, and then also I have to give myself, uh, uh, I have to actually give Matt's channel a shout out for the people who aren't subscribed to Matt's channel. Matt's channel is uh, Tesla Tips by Mountain Ranger. And uh, people might not get why it's mentioned that, but as uh, he can probably talk about that, you see his little picture in the background there, Ocean Views. Uh, so let's go ahead and have Matt talk about his channel, what he does and what he sure. plans to do at some point. Yeah, sure. Uh, my shortcut for my channel, if, he, if you're checking on YouTube, it's at mtn ranger one word so um i'm still keeping that as my my search um you know way to find me and i'm eventually going to be switching over the channel in some time when i get the car ocean in uh, hoping around may or so uh switching over to the ocean views uh 
uh, name for the channel. So I'll, I'll still have all my content for my Tesla. Um, most likely going to be selling it, but uh, I still have all <laughs> my five years. I have five years of videos uh, of ownership of the car. So uh, some of them are still applicable to the Fisker Ocean too. Like for example, charging. Um, Certain accessories are, are going to be probably similar between the cars, and I uh, can't wait to to get the car and then find stuff uh, to do videos about. Yeah, you and me both. That'll be a lot of fun, um, and that's why we do this. So everybody knows we, we do this for having fun. Um, there's, uh, you know, it's it's a fun time to hang out and chat about something that we we both enjoy. We both enjoy the Fisker Ocean. And uh, it's it's a pleasure to have everybody join us right now. I think there's like over 100 people watching us uh, on YouTube. So thank you, everybody, for, for watching us. And we finally just hit um, 50 likes on the video. So thanks, everybody, for, for liking the video. Um, thank you to the people who are subscribers of our channel. Um, we broke, I think it was last week, we broke over 4,000 subscribers. I think it's like 4,040. Nice. So that's pretty neat. Um, all within... But we're coming up here actually next week will be, I think it's next week, will be the one year anniversary of doing this. Um, so that'll be actually pretty neat to kind of give a, a recap on what we learned and, uh, you know, what we've done over the, the course of the past year. And as everybody knows, um, we end up doing this just for fun as a hobby. And if you want to support the hobby, um, you can actually, uh, you know, you can follow along to our channel. That's obviously very helpful. Uh, but you can also become, uh, you get the Fiskarati premium subscription on Fiskarati.com. And that actually removes the ads. I know people hate ads. I hate ads. And that's one way to remove the ads. And you also get access to premium articles and content. So I've been writing at least uh, uh, one premium article a week and I don't ever know what it's going to be about, but I make something premium. And when we get the car uh, in April timeframe, second quarter of uh, this year, there's going to be lots of premium content, lots of fun stuff that I'll be able to do because I have the car and uh, it'll be fun to just do stuff for people who support the channel and, and the hobby. Um, so thank you everybody who does that. I'm going to actually put, if, if anybody wants to, to uh, get the premium membership. I'm gonna actually put a link in the chat and people can go ahead and uh, take a look at that. I'm gonna pin it to the top of the chat for the rest of the chat. So there you have it. Okay, let's go on to the next thing. Enough talking about that stuff. Let's talk about the poll we did last week. So on all things Fisker, uh, we talked about pop-up locations. There was pop-up locations all over the place, primarily in Europe. We don't know where the pop-up location is going to be next here in uh, the, the United States. Um, I suggested of all the places it could be, it should be, in my opinion, the, uh, you know, the home of Super Bowl 57, Phoenix, Arizona. That is where I think the next pop-up location should be. And if it's going to happen, it should happen here in and this should be announced in any, oh, any moment now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to go with the probably not going to do it, but they should do it if uh, if they want to leverage the massive audience there. And Phoenix is a very um, future forward city. There's a lot of uh, green initiatives and there's a lot of people with electric vehicles out there, including a huge readership of uh, people on Fiskarati who live in the Phoenix area. And that's how we selected the cities. There's 25 cities uh, that we put in the poll and people said, how'd you come up with them? Why'd you leave mine out? And it was based <laughs> on the readership, right? It's based on where everybody, you know, reads Fiskarati from. And one of the places happened to be Phoenix. It's not like the top, I think it's like number 16 or 17, um, but it made the list and, uh, I thought that was that was pretty neat, and believe it or not, it actually won the the poll. Uh, I left the poll open just to kind of a running poll, just to kind of see. Um, at the time, I think it was like 112 votes, and it ended up. Uh, let me go ahead and find it here real quick. Let's see if I can throw this up. Um, it was like 112 votes when I ended up recording uh, the the results and put them in the article. But here's the live poll right here and uh now it has 116 votes but still 
uh, you know, way above the rest. Now 18 votes, 15.5%. Phoenix uh, is by far the winner. So that's where I'm guessing the next pop up. Who was the runner up? The um, the runner up was actually, I think it might have been uh, Atlanta. 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 Atlanta makes yeah. sense. Yeah, totally makes sense. East Coast. And, yeah. And then also you had uh, number three, New York City. And then you have uh, Washington, D.C. And then Chicago. So that was the poll. And that's, uh, yeah, that's that's what we ended up learning. Oh, I didn't even have it on the screen. Here is the poll on the screen so people can, can see all the results. Uh, you know, where should the Fisker Ocean pop up next? The winner, Phoenix, Super Bowl 57. So um, I've already said I'm rooting for the, the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I think you said last week you 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 aren't rooting for anybody. Uh, yeah, but maybe, yeah, I'm rooting yeah. for the commercials. Okay, I usually root for the commercials too. <laughs> I probably will also root for the commercials, uh, but I'm going to end up cheering on the the uh, very quietly. I, I don't shout at the TV like my brother, who might be watching right now. Actually, probably not. Actually, we're going to a Super Bowl party <laughs> on Sunday, and I think oh, nice. they're uh, I think they're uh, Philly fans, so. I, I think I'll be Philly for the uh, <laughs> yeah, or you'll get booted for one that or the other, game. right? <laughs> yeah. So let's move along. Let's. Uh, that's the poll. So thank uh, thanks to everyone who who voted in the poll. Hopefully, we end up um, hearing when the next pop application is. Uh, the, the European road tour continues. There's pop applications there all the time. Um, maybe, just maybe, there will be a pop application in London. That's right. London might get a pop-up location. And the reason I say that, let me throw this on the screen here. This one I didn't even add to the list of things to talk about tonight. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, let's see. Let me write something here real quick. Uh, we're going to end up talking about the right and drive Fisker Ocean, right? We ended up learning that today. We learned about the right hand drive Fisker Ocean. And we got a couple, we actually got a couple photos. We only got one photo of the right-hand drive Fisker Ocean. And here it is, here is Henrik sitting in the Fisker Ocean with the thumbs up, that's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, but there he is. And if you can see here, I, in the photo in the background, super easy to see there's a great white Fisker Ocean. And this one you can see the white, uh, you can see the white paint or white exterior and the door trim. And the funny thing, back on I forgot the exact date, but middle of December, just before the holidays, uh, Henrik ended up sharing this photo here. And he ended up saying something about how the first right-hand Fisker Ocean is currently being built. And uh, that was, I believe, the battery setting machine uh, was right there. So I grabbed the battery, set it, and it's going to end up screwing it in or doing whatever it does there. Um, that was actually something really cool that we saw on the factory tour but that was the first sighting of the right hand drive Fisker ocean at magnastera and then today we actually see henrik sitting in what could potentially be the same one that we saw back in the middle of december uh so that was 55 days ago from today when we saw this particular photo so almost two months ago uh, that was pretty pretty neat and that makes me wonder okay last week if you recall, Matt, we ended up seeing the Fisker Ocean being unloaded over in uh, on the streets of London with the transport company that That's right. got uh, that that may have gotten busted for <laughs> for sharing those those photos. Um, but they created kind of a little frenzy, and people thought, "Oh wow, there's a Fisker Ocean here. What's what's it going to do?" And we thought maybe a pop up location, maybe it's for the lounge. Who knows? And somebody just asked a question. Speaking of lounges, in the chat. They said, when is the lounge going to open in the Grove? That was Troy. And we don't know yet. It's supposed to be Q1 2023. Maybe we'll get an update on the earnings call, um, whenever that might be. So that's, um, I think there's going to be a pop-up location next in, in London. And uh, it's like, they got the right-hand drive Fisker Ocean. Why would they want that? Because those are going to be sold in one of the first launch markets for the Fisker Ocean, that being the United Kingdom. So why not put one, uh, why not put a pop-up location in London? There's lots of demand for it. And that actually happened to be like uh, a runner up. I think it was like runner up number six or something like that in our poll. And it tied with like 
five or six other uh, cities for uh, with like four and a half percent of the vote. So there are people who definitely want to see the fiscal ocean in London. And uh, that would be pretty neat. So right hand drive fiscal ocean. We got that one covered up. That was a bonus for everybody uh, that's uh, following along. And now we're going to talk about music cares. So this one. Uh, what did we learn uh, this weekend? We saw the Fisker Ocean. We saw the Grammys. The Grammys were, were on Sunday. And there was, uh, you know, an, a, a pre-event uh, where there's like a foundation and they honor someone. Uh, in fact, they honored two uh, people in the music industry. One of them was Smokey Robinson. And uh, let's see here. Let me find the article. I think I had the article up here. So... They ended up showing off a couple different uh, photos of the Fisker Ocean at this event. And it was the first time we actually saw uh, something called uh, the ELS Studio 3D. We ended up seeing uh, an image. It got a couple images. Fisker Ocean and Silver Lining sitting there with folks like maybe the air glider wheels. And you see this... I don't know, uh, sign in the background, ELS Studio 3D. It's some sort of, uh, and it looks like it's a carpeted uh, area that the Fisker Ocean's on. So maybe it's indoors somewhere. And they have a you know, video playing in the background, probably the Fisker Ocean cruising uh, in the desert. And you end up seeing ELS Studio 3D. Well, ELS Studio 3D happens to be a product offering by Panasonic. Uh, automotive company they have a music division and Fisker announced uh, without announcing that they're going to be supporting the ELS Studio 3D and then we ended up getting an update on Fisker's website so for those that uh, follow along on the site we ended up seeing the change it used to say Fisker uh, I don't know Fisker sound system or Fisker Pulse sound system. It now says Fisker Pulse audio system. Mm. Uh, not that that's a big difference. Hyper but sound, that, right? Yeah. It was well, originally sound. was hyper sound. They changed yeah, that right? a long time ago. They changed yeah. that like six months ago. Uh, it used to be called hyper sound and then they changed it to Pulse. And now they changed it. They changed it to Pulse uh, sound system. And now they have it as Fisker Pulse audio system. So all semantics all kind of means the same <laughs> thing. Um, but they made some edits, and uh, uh, that's the bit we wanted to talk about tonight. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, uh, Matt. So the two things. So previously, uh, and I ended up highlighting um, what we saw previously. So uh, they ended up changing uh, before. It ended up saying, uh, actually, let me read what it says now, and then we'll talk about what, what it, it changed to. So um, it says on their website, get your electric motor running. Head out on the highway and experience your favorite music on the premium Fisker Pulse audio system powered by ELS Studio 3D. With 575 watts of power, 15 speakers, a 19 liter subwoofer enclosure, and one of the most effective six speaker dashboard arrays of its kind, the Fisker Pulse system immerses the driver and passengers in a glorious sea of 360 degree sound. So what changed? Um, what we saw change was uh th there's been a couple different edits people have seen different things but we, we captured it when it was called hypersound it then changed to the pulse uh sound system now it's the pulse audio system um it still has the 575 watts of power and six speaker dashboard array however we only have 15 speakers now and a 19 uh liter subwoofer enclosure so that's what's changed. The subwoofer enclosure decreased by one and a half liters. Who knows if that makes a huge difference? Um, I'm not. I got a photo. Uh, I love music. Show. I listen. Oh I'm yeah, showing. the photo. Yeah. I think you're going to show might have been a photo that I took in Magna. Let's see. Let's see your photo. Is this oh, the one yes. that you took? It is the photo. I took that photo. I took that photo with my iPhone. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it's the subwoofer enclosure. It's the first time we've seen the subwoofer. And uh, I didn't know that, uh, like that is what I took in November, early November. My guess is it hasn't changed since November, uh, yeah. but it could have. Um, my guess is, is it's changed since they originally wrote the press 
kit for the Fisker Ocean and had it on their website. Someone had to go do some updates and they ended up making some some minor adjustments or corrections. But yeah, that that is the latest one that we saw from, I think it was November 7th. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, what do you know about it? I think I think you may have some more information. I think you might have zoomed in and saw a couple yeah, of bits of writing. Yeah, there's there's a company that I think they hired to do the engineering of the enclosure. And I think I posted that on the Fiskarati forums, uh, the link for the company. Yeah. Um, I think they do uh, electronics and, and audio stuff for manufacturers. So I bet they it was a subcontracted deal to make that. And um, I think what you said is probably right. I think what we see in your picture here is probably what we got now. And it's just the specs are slightly different from the original press releases that we saw, you know, last year or before that. I, you know, I, I don't know the exact size and in inches of the subwoofer or the enclosure volume. It's hard to tell from the picture, but from the, you know, the description that it's, it's smaller um, is usually not a great thing. You usually like to have the enclosure as big as possible for base. But uh, I guess we'll see uh, find, you know, what it comes out, what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we found out that the ELS Studio 3D was previously in the Acura. Uh, an Acura, um, I, I forgot the exact model, but it's like an Acura, uh, maybe 2014-ish, 2016, I don't know, somewhere thereabouts. There was a, a video created by Panasonic that introduces the uh, ELS Studio 3D and it sounded good in the in the YouTube video. It sounded really neat um, how they came about with uh, the creation of, of that product. And I look forward to hearing uh, more on it. I have listened to a song or a part of a song uh, when I was in Graz, Austria. We got to hear Hotel California and it sounded really good. And they, they put it on and um, I, you know, they, they had the volume on and I said, turn it up. And they said, how loud? I said, all the way it goes, you know, as far as it goes, I want to hear this thing. And, uh, they cranked it up a little bit, not, not super loud. And I don't listen to super loud music, but I don't want to kind of hear what it sounded like when I was recording it. Um, I haven't shared that, uh, I haven't shared that video yet. I don't know if I'm going to share that one because it, it shows a lot of screens on the UI that they probably didn't want people to see and still haven't shown people. So I'm going to hold that one close to the best. And at some point. Um, we'll end up probably just recording our uh, own, you know, music. I'll say, hey, what, what do you guys want to listen to tonight? And we'll go down there and we'll record it or something for fun. Um, but yeah, that I, I can't wait to listen to music. I love listening to music. I listen to music all day long when I go running, when I'm working, uh, when I'm hanging out. Uh, we listen to a lot of Disney hits uh, with our, our daughter. I love it. And we got it. We played a game last night that was. It was, you know, guess the name of the song. Whoever guesses the name of the song gets dessert or what movie the song's from. And uh, me and my daughter were the only ones that got it right, but everyone seemed to get dessert. So um, <laughs> nobody followed the rules, but it was fun. And uh, I love listening to music. So uh, we'll get more on, on the music when we get our own Fisker Ocean or when Fisker releases some details. But let's go ahead and uh, jump into our notable EV news. Um, so this is, a, I don't even want to call it a segment, but a portion of, of our, our show um, where we end up talking about uh, things that we thought were interesting in the EV world that uh, we thought everybody should know. One of the things that uh, we want people to know about is the Chicago Auto Show. So the Chicago Auto Show happens to be the nation's, I believe it's the nation, or this is what they say, the nation's largest auto show. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what the event organizers say. And it might be, it might be the, the nation's largest seeing as they're close to Detroit. Uh, but uh, our friend Jim from OSR Garage is actually gonna be streaming live tomorrow morning from the Chicago Auto Show on press day. So go to his channel, check it out, youtube.com slash OSR Garage. You can look at and see whatever he brings us from there. I'm gonna take a peek and see what he what he ends up streaming. I have no idea what he's gonna stream, but it's something uh, neat. Maybe there'll be some some cool EVs there. Um, I don't think Fister's gonna be there, or at least I haven't heard. That would be interesting if they do make an appearance there. 
but I haven't heard that they would be there or not. I'm going to go with that they're not going to be there. I believe there's also a Toronto auto show coming up. And let's see when that one is. Uh, let's see, Toronto, I think that one might also be this month, February 17th. So the Chicago auto show starts on the 11th of February. The Canadian International Auto Show in Toronto is February 17th through 26th. So there's a lot of auto shows. There's there's two right there for Fisker to pick. Um, I'm sure people would be excited uh, if they go to either of those auto shows. Chicago, though, happened to be one of the top uh, cities that uh, showed up in the poll, and there was 116 people that voted at the end of the day. Uh, and if you still want to vote on that poll that we're uh, no longer tracking, feel free because it's open. Um, <laughs> you can continue to cast your vote. Uh, so, so the auto show, that'll be fun. Uh, check out Jim's channel for that one. And then also, too, Tesla increased a couple prices. Did you did you hear about that, uh, Matt? Them increasing yes. their prices? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah we're, do you go for it? Do you know exactly why? <laughs> I, I I think I'm going to make a guess. Okay. Um, I think it has to do with uh, the EV tax credit, right? Yeah. Yep. The qualifications had changed uh, from the Treasury Department. Uh, basically, the cars originally had to be seven seaters uh, for the Model Y to get credit, and now all the Model Ys get get the credit, and um, and they're allowed. They're now classified as SUVs, and all, this is not just Tesla. It's, it's um, a lot of cars. I think the Ford Mach E, the VW ID4. Uh, there was a number of them that are all now. Uh, oh, uh, the Cadillac, a uh, Lyric was a big one too. They're all considered SUVs now, and they all now have an eighty thousand uh, dollar cap, which is uh, allows a lot more cars to be covered okay. by the tax credit. Got it. Yeah, it seems like over the last couple of weeks, there's been lots of changes going back and forth with uh, interpretations and and yep. change just rule changes or I don't know a bunch of stuff with the EV tax credit. Um, I, I, I can't even keep up anymore of what's, what's going on. There's just way too much stuff. I'm just going to wait for the dust to settle and then read something and hopefully it's get It's going to change again in March. So yeah, uh, right. That's, that's when they do the battery, uh, components and chemical composition rules, uh, finalized. And we may see a bunch of them disappear again. So it's, uh, it's kind of, uh, uh, <laughs> Do you think they're going to stick to stick to having like I don't know what was it like fifty or sixty percent of the batteries, uh, materials, uh, minerals need to be mined in North America? Is that going to stick? Do you think, or are they going to change that? I have no idea. I don't think anybody knows what they're going to do if if they decide to delay it or uh, enforce it. Who knows? Got it. So that's uh, yeah, that's interesting, and then. Um, any other news that, that you're aware of that you wanted to talk about uh, that happened in the, in the world of, of EVs over the past week? Nothing that I really noticed, but I, I've been kind of busy so far this week at work. I haven't been reading a lot of the uh, EV news uh, out there. but uh, Yeah, I thought um, I, I read one, one tidbit today about uh, Rivian and Polestar joining forces to create awareness around uh, greenhouse gases and emissions. And they're trying to, um, you know, help people understand that in order to, to reach, uh, you know, the you know, global warming initiatives uh, and, and trying to, you know, prevent global warming, um, people should switch to battery electric vehicles. So they're joining forces to kind of market uh you know hey support you know uh electric vehicles get your electric vehicle and uh we posted that article earlier today i thought that was kind of interesting uh mm -hmm. that they end up putting that in there and the article actually mentioned uh, so it said basically uh they agree that urgent action is needed regarding global warming uh, the automakers also admit that passenger vehicles are responsible for 15% of the total greenhouse gas emissions. And one interesting bit in that article, it talked about uh, 
a couple of different companies, including Fisker, it said uh, basically that Rivian, Canoe, Neo, Fisker, Lucid, Xpeng, Aptera, or Polestar, they exist and have a real shot at thriving uh, if uh, people are, are really serious and interested about uh, helping make a change and prevent global warming. So um, I thought that was interesting that it got a mention in an article that was about Rivian and Polestar. Uh, so that that's our, our, our notable EV news for the week. There really wasn't too much uh, stuff. Uh, however, if people find interesting news that they want us to feature here, if we, if we come across stuff, we'll throw it over in the Fiskarati forums down in the uh, general discussion for everything other than Fisker, um, since we spend most of the time chatting about Fisker. So um, there you have it. I, there's a couple questions that came up. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at those. I think somebody said, uh, asked a question about whether or not that, oh, looks like Jim made an appearance uh, in the chat. Hello, Jim. Thanks for watching uh, our show tonight or popping into the chat. Um, somebody had a question about lights. They said, has anyone seen how well the headlights perform? There's a couple videos of Henrik at uh, night or somebody in, at Magnastera driving on the test track at night. Uh, it's hard to tell how well the headlights will perform at night. Um, we've seen a couple different videos of, of the headlights, the taillights at night, more of the taillights I think I've seen than the headlights. Uh, but we, we have seen a few of them and who knows until you're out there on the road. Um, I live in a place where there's a lot of, uh, where there's actually, there's, there's a city nearby, uh, maybe a five mile drive from here that has like zero light pollution, like no lights whatsoever. So it'll be fun to take the Fisker Ocean through that and, uh, see how well it does. And that'd be pr pretty fun to do. Uh, and there's a lot of straightaways too, where you can, uh, you know, hit the accelerator and, and see. Uh, if it does the same exact thing it did in, in Graz, Austria, when I smashed the accelerator. And I'll make sure to hold the wheel like this, because that's how you're <laughs> supposed to hold the wheel, right? Um, so, <laughs> oh, it's funny. That's funny. I, just, I laugh about that. Um, <laughs> so let's see, will Fisker be in Chicago? Um, I don't see them on the Chicago Auto Show website and john devansky makes a good point it costs he says millions of dollars to attend i don't know if it's millions of dollars for a company to have a, a booth um i bet you it's expensive i would i would uh venture yeah. to guess hundreds of thousands but probably not millions maybe if you need to buy all the show stand stuff to get there to have a booth maybe it's in the millions um, but I, I don't think the, the spots are that much. Um, I've been to many different trade shows where we've had booths for the companies I've worked at and it's like 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, and that's expensive, 50 grand. Um, and you start getting into like, uh, when you start throwing around money, like 50 grand, a hundred grand, things like that, you end up becoming like a, you know, a, a, a bronze sponsor, a silver sponsor, a gold sponsor, a platinum sponsor. Um, so. Maybe the car com maybe car companies are different. I don't know. Maybe it does cost millions, but I would go. I'd venture to guess hundreds of thousands for a, well, for a look, spot. Look what Fisker did at uh, the CES conference. They just rented a parking lot and had a pop up there. Absolutely, and that was and, probably pretty cheap. You know, to rent absolutely. that day. So and they got um, a lot of people to come and look at the vehicle, right? So yep. there there are other ways to, to have a presence. presence. Yeah, have a presence and not spend a lot of money. Yeah, absolutely. And there's nothing to say they couldn't find a, you know, an empty parking lot somewhere in, in Chicago. I'm sure there are empty parking lots somewhere and they can probably do the same thing they did in Las Vegas. Absolutely. And maybe even the same in, in Phoenix at the Super Bowl. I'm sure there's somewhere in the area where they can find an open an open space to let people have a look at the Fisker Ocean, not even test drive it, but just have a look at it. Uh, so that's that. Uh, Somebody says, uh, I don't even understand what their question is, but uh, it says higher end black is vegan leather. No, um, the black of this plus, you can call it vegan leather. You can call it pleather. You can call it synthetic leather, or you could call it um, eco leather. I don't know if I said that one, but yeah, it's a vegan leather. It's a vegan uh, interior. I think they're all considered vegan interior, every one of them. And uh, black of this plus is our, our our pick 
Chris, Henrik Fisker, he did not select the Black Abyss Plus in any of his options. Uh, any of his favorites didn't include that. I, I find that surprising. Uh, and he also didn't include Seesaw, which was his own personal in his own personal configuration. So I don't feel too bad about that one. That is my favorite one of all the ones I've seen. But that's my preference. It's all preference. Every color, interior, exterior, wheels, it's all preference. It's not a right or a wrong, good or bad. Um, it's whatever, whatever you like, that's all that matters. But I can say, I do not like the fabric formats. Ugh, it's disgusting. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that is personal preference too, right? You might like fabric formats. No, no offense, um, to the people that like those, but I prefer the rubber formats. That's, uh, I love keeping things clean as possible. I think dirty, dirty floors, ugh, gross me out. Um, both in the car, in the house, uh, yeah, that's how, that's how it is. Um, so probably too much information. We're talking about all things Fisker. We're not talking about dirty floors, but dirty floor mats. That's, uh, that's not fun. It's gross to clean dirty floor mats too. I have to take them outside, hose them off, brush them, uh, <laughs> the scrub brush and soapy water. Oh, disgusting. Um, so yeah, let's see here. We have, are there any photos of the wheels without the carbon cover? Yes, uh, if you're referring to the slipstream wheels, uh, the Fisker Ocean that we yeah. test drove uh, in Graz, Austria, that had uh, no covers on it. And those uh, look awesome. The only thing about the Fisker Ocean slipstream wheels without the cover is there's little tiny dots or circles uh around it i don't i can't remember how many there were there might have been three or four of them where the cover i'm guessing presses on and clips into place um yeah, i'm not sure about that oh you got a picture let's check it out there you go there it is and you have the blue caliper um so yeah the there's there's little dots on there and it looks like hard to see it's, in that yeah, one. it's hard to see on that one um, but yeah, there's these little dots and I'm guessing that the covers clip on and, and we've tapped on the covers. They're, they're hollow and they sound, it sounds, you know, hollow, but they, you know, they're, they're there. They looks, it looks pretty neat. I like it. I like the look. Um, I've seen in person, the air glider, uh, and silver. And I've seen the black abyss, uh, or not the black abyss. I've seen the slipstream in both uh actually i haven't seen the slipstream in back i've only seen it in silver um so those are the only two that i have seen but that is oh that's a nice cover that's what um, I'm, I'm thinking what the cover looks like if you take it off the wheel is yeah you're probably been. right yeah. yeah that was a good photoshop yeah yeah I, I think i grabbed it from one of these yeah yeah that's really nice but yeah the black portion of the wheel is it's it's the same black wheel it's just a different cover yeah. so it's the same black wheel uh what i think would be neat is down the road maybe you could purchase uh a black cover or you could purchase the silver cover uh if you if you have one and not the other and you can kind of dress up your wheels a little differently uh yeah. so i think that would actually be kind of neat uh the other fisker ocean wheel that has a cover would be your aero stealth wheel and that is i believe the only 20 inch wheel i think that's tomaso's favorite wheel if he's still in the chat uh he's going for the range and uh not sure what else but uh that is a, it is actually a cool looking wheel and i think the the aero the, the stealth wheel uh without the cover is pretty nice looking and we saw that over in park city utah so that was a pretty cool mm -hmm. looking uh wheel as well for a stock wheel or a base wheel i think that's i think that's just as nice as the as the wheels that i have on on the tesla um they're painted black uh like that like that uh slipstream but uh really nice for for a standard wheel and a 20 inch wheel is a big wheel um that's a really big wheel for a twin for, for a standard a standard wheel bigger than any car that I've ever owned again. Uh, so yeah, that's what we have on wheels. That was our, our questions uh, for the wheels. And uh, I think that might be all the questions. I think we've answered most of them. Um, 
any speculation uh, as to why Fisker may opt to add track spacers? I don't know. I would say looks. It's uh, Henry Fisker yeah. said he he you know liked uh, it was his personal preference was the the twelve millimeter track spacers, uh, and maybe he likes you know the wheel to protrude out a little. Maybe it looks cool to him. I I don't know. I never had a car that has them. Maybe that'll be an accessory that is in yeah. the Fisker shop at some point for us to to purchase. Uh, you know what what I'm I'm starting to see slowly. Uh, we have Inno uh being the first company to be on the Fisker Ocean show at an auto show. Uh, there's going to be third parties that make stuff for the Fisker Ocean. Um, the first officially announced one happens to be Inno and they didn't even say Inno It's just like we had to look and try to figure it out from you know <laughs> five five thousand miles away. Uh, but um, they have they have that's the first uh, first company, and I checked out their website. They have you know, roof racks for, every, you know, practically every company. So um, expect companies out there to make uh, stuff. And and I was joking earlier today, like if, if nobody ends up making a rubber floor mat that looks good or just makes a rubber floor mat for the Fisker Ocean, maybe maybe I said, maybe I should start a Kickstarter and, and, and see how many people actually want rubber floor mats. And maybe I can go make rubber floor mats uh, for, for everybody. Um, that'd be that'd be fun. Uh, probably not fun, but it would be interesting. I'd learn something new. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that that's uh, that's what we have so far. Um, not too much else. Let's see. Oh, there's another question. Uh, do you think the spacers would change the feel of the ride? No, uh, uh, it pushes yeah. them out a little bit. I don't twelve mil twelve millimeters. I don't even know how much twelve millimeters is. Like um, half an inch, I think, is it? Or half an inch. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. Point four seven of an inch. So that's not not very much. Um, you probably won't even visually notice it too much. Maybe if you're like, at least I won't visually notice a half the wheel sticking out a half an inch. But somebody who's a designer like Henrik Fisker, he'll know, uh, especially because he designed the car. So he, he thinks it looks better being out. Maybe people will go and and put spacers in to make it. Look it may affect like the efficiency, so it's hard to say. You know, yeah. maybe maybe that's more stabilization. Like yeah. So, I mean, if it, if it was something that would help the efficiency, I would think that they would have it standard to help them out EPA wise, you know, but uh, if it's something that may hurt efficiency, they'll make it as an option. Maybe. And Tommaso, <laughs> Tommaso lets us know the 20 inch wheels have the better range, better ride, less expensive, lasts longer less prone to pothole damage thank you very yep. much that's uh helps that's answer true. questions as why the 20 inch wheel is better than the 22 inch wheel um for those that are interested there's a question about uh any updates on the sunroof cover no we don't have any updates on the sunroof cover last is uh, more details to come on the solar roof shade and uh that'll be interesting to see if that comes up that won't come up on the earnings call um, but that, uh, that's something that's on that, that was on people's minds. Um, now maybe people are thinking about roof racks because sunroofs were so sunroof shadows were so like, uh, a couple weeks ago, <laughs> just moves. Ebbs, on ebbs to the and next flows. controversy. The next, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's interesting. So Nick, congratulations. You've got number 800 for your build nice. uh your, your sequence number that's a cool round number speaking of that i'm going to throw something up that is actually pretty cool if i can find it um real quick so we've got a couple threads in, in fiscarati forums if you're not on fiscarati forums what are you waiting for go on and, and join us i'll put a, a link over here in the chat for people if you aren't there go ahead and check that out and uh you can join us on here we have some fun uh every now and again on here like every day and there was a really cool PDF, and I think Matt, you may have mentioned this a while back. If I yes. can find it real yeah. quick, it was on. Uh, yeah, uh, Josephy probably butchered that, but they're they've been tracking, doing this tracker on on Facebook. And let me throw it up here. Maybe if you Nick head over to, if you want to head over to Fiscarati forums, post your 
a screenshot or even tell people what your number is, but post your, uh, post your screenshot of, of what number you are. That, that's always pretty fun. Um, but let me share my screen. There's a bunch of rows of people who have uh, Fisker Ocean Ones and all of their sequence numbers and where they're located. Um, and Nick, where are you located? Uh, we've been seeing a lot of people originally, like you mentioned last week, Matt, a lot of people were in Southern California or Denmark originally, and then we started yep. seeing people in the Midwest, East Coast, uh, all over the place now with the Fisker Ocean uh, Ones and their sequence numbers. So they've had um, their build lock. Let's see here if we can see this on the screen. Okay, there we are. We so Connecticut, I see. Yeah, Los Angeles, Denmark, Sweden, Greenwich, Connecticut, Germany, oh. San Francisco, Newport, Los Angeles, Sacramento, another bunch of San Francisco's, San Diego. And you can see the numbers like it's basically sorted by number. So 17 was at the top. That's Los Angeles. Maybe somebody at Fisker, maybe not. Then 27, 28, a bunch of low, you know, pre 100s or lower than 100. And then we have, um, uh, let's see here, we have quite a few in the 100s, 200s, 300s, Houston, Sacramento, Wilmington, Delaware, Denmark, Palm Springs, Cary, North right Carolina. Right near me. Irvine. Hmm. Aventura, Florida. Never heard of that. That's Long near Beach. Miami. Oh, okay. And, yeah. Another San Diego, Denmark, Braden, Braden, Bradenton, Florida, Bradenton, Florida. I yeah. butchered that. Jacksonville. By Tampa. All right. Germany. Jesperg, if you're still on, hey, thanks for joining us. You were you're out in the out in Europe. A bunch of Germany and Denmark. Oh yeah, there's tons. From the 2000s yeah. to four thousands. Yeah, they're so yeah. far. That's the part that doesn't make sense, right? There's probably I don't know how many are listed here. Let's say there's fifty. That's probably even not even fifty on here. But um, yeah, there's like there's so many in the. Huh? In the I think there's more than fifty, but you think there's yeah. more than fifty? Yeah, there could be more than fifty. Um, but like, geez, there's uh, four thousand. So with the lowest one we have is seventeen. The highest one we have on the spreadsheet is 4,853. Wow. That's a big range uh, between and, the two. Wow. And so then we have an color, even thousand. That's so color doesn't thing. seem to be a, a factor in this. You know, some people are thinking maybe paint color. They would try to yeah. maybe group them by paint color for a production. I mean, that would make sense. Um, but yeah, it would, wouldn't that it? doesn't look like the case, though. Yeah, and like wheels, not a big deal. It just seems like at the beginning, uh, it looks like a lot of the lock dates were the early lock dates in, geez, there's some, yeah, most of them are January or what I'm seeing. Oh, even, yeah, early January, a couple in mid-December um, are, are, it looks like Sweden, Denmark, primarily Denmark and uh, Southern California. The reservation dates are all over the place, right? So yeah. it'd be interesting to know what the, to the madness was of how, how Fisker's assigning is. Is it like when people actually placed their, their pre-order? Is it, you know, what is it? Who knows? Don't have a clue, but it would be interesting to know because it's all kind of like a club. If you want to call it that, right. We're all a part of the, the early club, um, of people who are supporting Fisker. So it's pretty neat. Um, I have my Fisker Ocean 1 pre-order locked. Matt has his, uh, you know, waiting to be locked. Yep. Uh, he's got his selection in. <laughs> Jeez, right? Yeah, click, tick, weeks. tick. Uh, it's going to be a long five weeks. Um, or not. You know, I find, believe it or not, I find doing these, doing these shows and, and writing the articles on the site, I find it fun, but I also find You're it to pass the time. Actually, no, it's for, what is it? Yeah, it's still five weeks. Yeah. Five weeks. What was, I saw a question on here. Um, where was it? It moved now. Oh, somebody was asking about the VIN 
uh, the format for the VIN. And we, I think, didn't you do an article or if there was something yeah. that showed? We, we showed one on VIN. here. Yeah. Yeah, we could probably uh, find that. But we don't know don't if that know. has anything to do with the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the numbers for the uh, one. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure how the VIN is going to be for that. Yeah, I took a picture of, of the VIN of the Fisker Ocean and Blue Planet that was sitting in the in the presentation room. I don't know if that's the right room in, in the office where we ended up uh, seeing the Fisker Ocean at uh, Magnesterra, and that was uh, that had a VIN number on it. Here, here's a VIN number. Let's see, can I pull this up? So yeah, we have this PDF here. Let's see. I haven't looked at this in a while. So we have VIN numbers. It's a PDF. This is on Fiskarati forums. If you search VIN and share my screen, zoom in here. Ah. So this is like a VIN decoder. I popped this in. And the VIN that we saw was VCF1SAE29PG00020. And this was actually on a uh, from a photograph of a Fisker Ocean. I actually think it might have been a Fisker Ocean in uh, Great White on the assembly line. It might have been a Fisker Ocean Sport, if I recall. And I did do an article of, uh, thinking about it. And uh, they actually have some information about the vehicle here. Oh, no, the ocean's going to look vehicle. like a Tahoe. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, that's not the right car, but I guess that must be the stock the stock image for a multi-purpose passenger vehicle. Um, that's fun. Or a SUV, a sports utility vehicle. Um, so yeah, it's like it just basically lists all this information about the vehicle. I, you know, there's there's a, let's see, Series Sport. Uh, what else do we find on here? It's a electrification level battery electric vehicle, primary fuel type electric, front wheel drive. It says gross vehicle weight rating class 2E, 6,001 through 7,000 pounds. Uh, and I think that might be all the interesting plant information. Graz, Austria. Side, uh, first, second, and third rows. Um, first row, driver and passenger, knee, first row. Yeah, it's a bunch of information. Uh, and let's see here. Bunch of information about the vehicle that Fisker has to submit in order to probably start getting, uh, being able to generate vehicle identification numbers. Number of seats, five, yeah, front wheel drive. I mentioned that, small battery pack. A lot of stuff is blank, yeah. Yeah, so much stuff's blank. But anyhow, that's, that's, uh, the VIN number for whoever's interested in, in hearing about the VIN number. So let's see here. Let me head over to the Fisker Investor Relations site really quick and see somebody just sent me a message um, who is a, a, a part of the Fiskerati, uh, has a Fiskerati premium membership. And they said, that the earnings call is expected the 21st of February. That's not confirmed. I'm going to check and see here. No. Yeah, it seems late. Uh, I still don't see anything on the Fisker Investor Relations site. Still no items found for this year. So we were thinking last week it would be like February 15th. Uh, that would be a, exactly a week from today. And... Uh, Maybe it's the 21st. Maybe it's not. Who knows? We don't know. But uh, we will let everyone know when we find out. So, so Gian has a question. Is classified as SUV and an MVP or MPV? Uh, multi-passenger multi vehicle. vehicle. Yeah. yeah, it was listed as both on that on that VIN. I don't number. know what the EPA is going to rank it, though, because there's no EPA page for the ocean yet. So I guess once... Once we get official EPA numbers, that'll probably show up on the EPA's website, is what I'm guessing. And yeah. they usually give you information about the category and, and a whole bunch of other stuff, too. So, Gian, you asked the question. There's the a link to the Fiskarati Forums page if you're interested in checking it out. 
Here's a, a question. Uh, they want to know if there's a plastic cover that will fit over the tow hitch. Um, mm. Not sure yet. Um, uh, we've seen pictures of plastic covers over the tow hitch, but we don't know if that's just if you order it without a tow hitch, you just get the plastic cover. It's hard to say. I know some cars do have plastic covers that go over the tow hitch and some don't. So um, I guess it remains to be seen. What else we got? I think. Um, yeah, I don't see too much else in here. I think we, I think we, uh, we yeah, try to address the question, a comments as we do the show. So it doesn't yeah. get lost. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And it lets us take a look at the chat in case there's someone doing something unruly. Last week we had someone doing something unruly. I didn't even know about it until the end, but, um, I ended up blocking that person for, uh, this show. So they don't, you know, distract everybody else. And it was actually a nice, pleasant, uh, chat in the chat tonight. So that was really good move. Um, so that's, that's good stuff. Uh, thank everybody for, for, uh, joining us tonight. Um, this is uh, All Things Fisker episode number 15. As I mentioned, you can find it on your favorite podcast. I'll probably uh, post it here in the next 15 or 20 minutes. Um, let us know if you like the podcast. If you don't, maybe we won't do it. But I think there's a fair number of people doing it. Uh, so uh, just let us know uh, on one of the articles you read. Let us know if you like the podcast. That would be helpful. Or, or if there's and, anything they want us to do, like any other topics yeah. or suggestions. That's a good one. That's that's, that's a good one. And even for the people that that listen in and watch the yeah. show as well, let us know if you like the format. I, I know a lot of people say, you guys could do this in five minutes. Like, why do you spend two hours doing this? And it's like, well, we're just fun, you know, chatting and talking and, and, and doing this. And um, it's really used to be like five minutes. I called it this week in Fisker and I would just run through the news in five minutes. And, and now we, we, we try to do it and talk about it. And that's kind of just what we're doing. And, uh, but we're definitely open to feedback. If you want us to change something up or if you want to uh, see something new, let us, let us know. Um, it would be fun. I think I, I did it a couple of times way back in the day before it was all things Fisker. I let people uh, who were listening in or watching the show, I let them join the show. And I think we did it like two or three times where we actually had somebody join live while I was on here and I would talk to them while they were, uh, you know, while we were up here. And, and that was always fun just to try to, you know, see who's a, a part of this. So if you're into that, um, join the forum. I will end up posting something and uh, uh, or reach out to me by email if you want to be on one of the upcoming shows and, and be a part of the experience here. It's always fun. Um, mix things up <laughs> but yeah who knows right uh so anyhow this is episode number 15 thank you all very much and it was a pleasure uh chatting with you tonight matt and right. uh i'm here we will see everybody soon all right good night all right from san diego have a good night